before I go to sleep tonight, uh, I just want to give a quick update on my back. Um, <clears throat> it's been about uh, three months or so since I've posted a video. And uh, if you remember, or if I go back to those videos, I, I, I was about ready to go on a work internship in Hawaii. Um, so I started, and had, my back had, had actually gotten better at that point. It felt better. Um, I had like no pain, but I don't know if you can hear this pop right there. I don't know if you heard that, but I lifted up my knee and uh, I lifted up my knee like this and it, it pops. It pops like right kind of like in the femur and then sometimes it almost seems like it pops, um, pops like back here in the back of the SI. It, fe it feels like it. I'm not sure if it does, but... This popping, it it uh, it started. This started happening probably about a year and a half ago, um, before I had the lift in my shoe. I'm on this trip, and it's the first time I started noticing it popping all the time. Um, so to me, this is a very. This has always been a very big um, diagnosis point for what's going on, although. My uh, osteopath in New York, he couldn't, he, he never really came to any conclusions or arguments about what that was and how that related to everything. But as I, over the, the year that followed getting my lift, uh, progressively the popping went away. And at the time that I was about ready to go out to Hawaii and work in a work internship, like on an organic farm, the it had completely, the popping had gone away. There was no more popping. And then I started working at a, uh, like a, a landscape, a part-time landscape job. And in a matter of just like a few days of doing that, I completely, yeah, to me it seemed like, from my perspective, it seemed like I, I my recovery was just totally, it, I went back. I went back rather than moving forward, so um, towards recovery. Um, so anyways, it's been about three months since then. Um, the pain slowly went away. The popping came all the way back. And as I've been out here in Hawaii, I ended up coming to Hawaii, but I didn't end up going to the work internship, but I kept the plane ticket, came out here, got a job, started working, and... Um, I don't have to lift at this job, though I do, I'm not supposed to have to lift at this job, though it's, it's a, like kind of, I work in a, a sales capacity for a construction company, so, you know, there is sometimes when I feel like I have to lift something, but um, overall, well, all I want to say is that I've been doing good for the last few months until like the last two weeks where the pain has um, resurfaced. Uh, I, th you know, I've started exercising a little bit since I've been out here. I go swimming, I go boogie boarding, stuff that's really low impact on my SI joint. Well, I try to make it that way, but there's been a couple times where it's been kind of uh, a little excessive. Um, and in general, I think it, I've kind of like overworked it maybe a little bit. And uh, the popping's kind of come back, but most interestingly is it, the pain has started to stay located in my SI joint. Um, though I can say after riding a lot today, I kind of feel it at the top of uh, where my quadratus lumbarum connects to my, this, it's always been a really sensitive trigger point where the quadratus lumbarum uh, ties into your rib cage up at the top. Um, so, but, but the only different thing is that it, the pain seems to stay mostly in the SI joint. And it feels like it's um, kind of uh, sw swollen or stiff a little bit at times. And uh, it's been about two weeks, so that's been 
actually really scary for me that that's come back as I've started working and I my hypothesis that if I just strengthen different muscles in my body I really felt like the SI would be able to pull itself out of its uh, uh, problems uh, that it has not totally um, worked out it's been more difficult to exercise different muscles and have the SI respond positively um, but I'm I'm hopeful still, and I, I came across this. Uh, I should put this in the in the, t the writings below. I came across this um, uh, this Facebook group dedicated to SIDJ, and I've been checking it out and posted a couple things on there with and had some positive um, feedback. There's about 350 people that are in the group, and there's a lot of active writers on the discussion board. And through that, I actually, they had a, um, an essay, I'm not going to get the name right, right now, let's see if I can find it really quick, it was, it's something about how to diagnose, um, SIDJ, and it was actually the best thing that I've ever read that really kind of outlines, okay, number one, you, you should what you should do, number two, number three, and um, kind of leave surgical, or they call them invasive techniques, as an absolutely last priority, uh, and only in the most correctly diagnosed circumstances with people that are capable of understanding the risks involved, which I thought was, it was really good. It was like, one of the best things I've ever read on SIDJ that really focused um, a lot of what the clinical diagnosis should be and how it should go and and also why it's it's such like a misdiagnosed thing and so um, anyways uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful for the future especially after reading that 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 there can be a non-surgical way of fixing this, um, even before even just getting like uh, prolotherapy, which I've kind of started to think it might be an option. Um, but on a good note, I do have a job and I just got medical insurance, so I should, hopefully I can find out. We'll find out soon if there's any doctors in this network that can that could be of assistance and. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's my that's my story. I still think the the biggest diagnosis points for me right now are the, is that it, it the pain is very clearly staying in the SI area, which before without the leg without the uh, lift in my shoe, the pain always used to shoot up into the middle of the quadratus lumbarum and like even higher, just like this whole area. So that's cool to see. Um, that happening, even though the pain in my SI sucks, but at least it's, at least the pain generator is, is stable, though I do think there's a, a strong relationship between the muscles above it, because I mean, even now as I sit, I mean, it, in my perception, it seems like the muscles tighten up to protect the SI, but um, it could very well be that the muscles above are, are contributing to the weakness of the SI, it could be you know, there's a lot of different perspectives that, that I haven't, that I'm going to need uh, a professional to really kind of work through, and probably many of them. Um, anyways, I'm reaching the 10 minute mark on this video. And, oh, and the popping, the popping of my leg. That, I don't know if you heard it there, but it, it lifted up my knee and it popped again. Um, it, it very clearly pops at the top of the femoral head. Like, it may pop in other places, like after I sit, but it's, it, and uh, after I stay in different positions for a long time, but it seems definitely to be there. And so, to me, those are the two biggest diagnosing factors, anyways. Hope you guys are feeling better. Questions, I welcome. Anyways, peace.